Years after the last steam loco of British Rail gasped its final puff of smoke, dedicated bands of men round the country still make sure the steam age doesn't die. And you can understand why. The glinting brasses, the gleaming paint, the mighty pistons and the hiss of steam all make a modern engine look rather small. Which is quite an achievement for a pocket Hercules like this from the Rumney, Hive and Dimchurch Light Railway, which this year celebrates its golden jubilee. only 15 inches wide, the Rumney Hive and Dimchurch plies across that strange territory known as the Rumney Marsh. This is where the Romans first landed. Here lived Dr. Sin, a legendary priest with a double life as king of the smugglers. From this reclaimed land, the Rumney Marsh sheep has gone all over the world. It was exactly 50 years ago that the Rumney Hythe and Dimchurch Railway opened. This film, taken on opening day by an enthusiastic amateur, shows the same engines that are in use today, with most of their parts intact after half a million miles of rattling over the tracks. The great event caused quite a stir in this quiet part of the country, especially as the Duke of York, later King George VI, was there to perform the ceremony. The founder, who was to run the railway for the next 40 years, was a steam fanatic called Captain Howie, who had the money to indulge his passion. Howie converted his own Rolls-Royce into a petrol loco and was determined to run it from New Romney to Hythe at a mile a minute. He was on target till halfway there when his Rolls-Royce ran out of steam. But Captain Howie wouldn't be beaten. Early one morning in the 1930s, he drove a scooter like this, the eight miles along the track from New Romney to Hythe, in just eight minutes, an average of 60 miles an hour. And when you consider that the trains are only allowed to do 25 miles an hour, you can see he was really traveling. Well, we can go one better than Captain Howie. We can do the same journey in under a minute. During the war, the Rumney Hythe and Dimchurch did its bit by carrying troops along the coast. They even built a little armoured train with anti-aircraft guns. But in 1947, the railway was reopened to passengers by Laurel and Hardy. Then, in 1957, the Queen brought Prince Charles and Princess Anne along for a ride. One man who's been there ever since the reopening 30 years ago is George Barlow. George, you, uh, you knew and worked with Captain Howie, the founder of the railway, for 17 years. What sort of a man was he? Oh, very shy, reserved man. Um, judged by normal standards, really, he was quite helpless in lots of ways. He never made a cup of tea or polished a shoe in his life, I don't think. Did he get his hands dirty with the railway, or was he very aloof? Uh, oh, no. Uh, in his earlier days, he drove quite a lot. And, uh, of course, this led to some very funny situations. The owner of the railway driving one of the locomotives. And, uh, of course, there's a story about when he was driving one day on a very hot day without his overall jacket, uh, wearing his old Etonian braces and tie. He'd uh, 
been asked to drive at very short notice, and a couple of old Etonians had been riding in his train, and when they were walking down the platform, they spotted this old chap in the engine, and uh, they said, look at this poor old fellow, an old Etonian too, and they gave him a very generous tip, and he left to tell that story. <laughs> yeah. If the day ever came when you had to sort of assist in the scrapping and the breaking up of one of these engines, what would you feel? Oh, I couldn't do it. No, couldn't do it. This is the bug, the engine that rose from the dead. It began its life here 50 years ago, was later sold, and was finally consigned to a Belfast scrap heap in 1949. But exactly 20 years later, the bug was found, buried under a mountain of old iron. She was restored, and today is to be fired for the first time for 30 odd years. Appropriately, the man with the big match is millionaire Bill McAlpine, whose injection of capital saved the R.H. and D. from bankruptcy in 1973. He's now the chairman. That's a uh, good condition. Is it lit? I think we're away. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Something coming up the chimney. Blended. Yeah. Is this a very exciting moment for you? Oh, absolutely fantastic. It's, uh, the, it's the first time that this locomotive has steamed at all for 25 years, and it must be uh, more than 40 years since it's steamed on this railway. Why was it important to bring it back, do you think? Um, well, it was... Uh, it, it, it belongs on the railway. It was uh, lying under a heap of scrap, and it's rather sad end for a locomotive if you can uh, restore it and bring it back to life. What makes somebody like you want to put quite a lot of money into saving a railway like this? Oh, uh, I mean, this railway is a unique institution, and uh, it's, it's really the only fully steam-operated railway in this country. I mean, there are lots of other railways on which there are steam engines, but this railway is run as a steam railway was run many years ago. Today, 10 engines run along the 14-mile track, and a permanent staff of 25 helps to carry 300,000 passengers a year. This makes the RH&D the third most popular attraction in the southeast, after Bewley and Canterbury Cathedral. Children, particularly, seem to relish a train that's their size. And they're not the only one who think that small is beautiful. When a regiment of diminutive Gurkhas was stationed nearby, they spent a lot of their spare time chugging up the line between Hive and Dungeness. And then there were the other visitors from the east who thought that the Rumney, Hive and Dimchurch light railway was just the ticket. They were a party of illegal immigrants who'd landed in the bay just over there at dead of night. And the following morning, they were discovered here at St. Mary's Bay Halt, queuing up for the London Express. Helped by Bill McAlpine's subsidy, the line now makes a modest operating profit. So, as long as there are people fascinated by steam and millionaires who don't mind an expensive hobby, the engines of the Rumney, Hyde and Dimchurch light railway seem set fair to notch up their next half million miles and their next half century of service.